Welcome back to New England Skilled Trades. Today we're, today we're going to do uh, NFPA 54 chimney charts for Category 1 appliances. This is one of those things that uh, seems like a lot of people have a hard time with. Or maybe they, they, they forget because they don't use them very often, especially with the evolution of uh, the mod con boilers and the power venters. But uh, we're going to go over them anyways because they still, they still test people on them. Now we're going to start off with um, some definitions. Uh, category 1, that's what we're going to talk about today. Gen, negative pressure, non-condensing, natural draft chimneys. Uh, let's see, cast iron boilers, uh, old school furnaces, you know, 26 gauge vents, all that. Um, category 2, you don't see that anymore, or if you don't see it, uh, I can't think of when you would see it, but that's a uh, negative pressure and condensing. It's no longer in use. It's kind of dangerous because you, it'll condensate too early in the venting process. You have built up in your vent and the flu where you don't want it. Uh, category three, that's your positive pressure, non-condensing. Uh, power vented watt heat as an example. You know, you see two inch and three inch SCED 40 PVC as an example of a vent there. Uh, single vent. Uh, just put an asterisk in there though for fan inducer is not a power vent. People see those field controls and drillings uh, with the you know with the proven switches. It's a fan assist that's that's different. Uh, if it pulls a draft, that's a draft induce. If it pushes a draft, it is forced draft. So when you see uh, fan assist on these charts, they're still that's still category one appliance. I just wanted to make sure you know the difference. Then we have category four, which are positive pressure condensing. Those are your mod con boilers, you know, your modulating condensing boilers, always with combustion air, uh, outdoor combustion air. And uh, that's where you get some of your condensation from, right? And that's where you get your efficiency from. And uh, again, this is a forced draft being pushed. All right. Um, a couple more definitions that pertain to what we're what we're doing here today. You have chimney flue, the passage or passages in a chimney for conveying the flue gas to the outdoors. Flue collar, that portion of an appliance designed for attachment of a draft hood, vent connector, or venting system. That's what's on your boiler and your, your furnace. Maybe you get a couple of wing bits you get attached to a, a boiler or something like that, but pretty much attached to it out of a crate. Uh, Appliance, any device that utilizes a fuel to produce light, heat, power, refrigeration, or air conditioning. So you hear appliance, you think washer, dryer, uh, stove, but uh, this is this is NFPA's definition. So when they say appliance in the, the charts, oftentimes we're talking uh, about our boilers and furnaces and water heaters. Next is our metal chimney. Uh, I know a handful of people haven't seen these, the, the B vent double wall, um, snap lock, and I was surprised uh, how many people I, I was talking to that didn't know what a B vent was, but uh, they're out there. It, it might depend on where you are in the state too, or in the country, so uh, everybody's seen a, a masonry chimney. If you're from, you know, the south, you at least see one on TV, but so these are in the charts, and that's that's why I put it in there. B vent chimney, masonry chimney. All right, now that we got that covered, we're gonna go over a couple of uh, couple of pictures here and some of the charts on NFPA 54. So this first one here is a picture of a 40,000 BTU water heater. Oh boy, it doesn't matter. It's the BTUs that really matter, uh, and the fact that it's single wall metal connector, the length, I mean the lateral. Your lateral from your distance, the uh, uh, lateral distance from the from the flue to the from the chimney to the collar, flue collar, um, and then from the flue collar to the top of the chimney is your height. And if uh, we look here.
we have here, this is our NFPA 54, so if you have this, um, you can follow along. This is uh, table 13.1D. You gotta look at the stuff. Masonry chimney, that's your main chimney. That's what's going through the house, all right? Number of appliances, single. So if you see a picture that has a boiler and a water heater, you're on the wrong shot. Uh, category one, just check, make sure it says category one, they should all say category one, but you never know, you can never be too careful. Then an appliance vent connector, that's a single wall metal connector, that's what we saw, we saw that picture, it was labeled. The uh, pictures are typically, when you take a test, are, are fairly well labeled, it's, it's people's uh, failure to do the steps and just double check all these small things, and that's where they usually get you, even if you remember, even if you remember um, some of the other important parts of uh, sizing. If you just make a s small mistake, you could be you could be off by a large amount. So we said we had a 25 foot height, but we have to round up. 30 is as um, is as high as we go. I mean, uh, 20 to 30. So 25, we get to round up to 30. Our lateral we said was five, which is perfect. We have a five right there. And then, uh, as, I, as I said at the beginning, you have fan minimum and max. That's your fan assistant. You don't want that. We're working with a natural, natural vent uh, appliance here. So we're going to be in this column. We have rounded up to thirty, five, and forty thousand BTUs. First column, we have anything? 75, that's fine. Four inch. Widen this up a little bit for you. Make it a little bigger. So in case you don't have a copy at your house, and you follow along, then maybe you can see that a little bit better. All right, so four inch. This here, four inch. Most likely 26 gauge. Same as the uh, mod con boilers and the power vented. Always go by the manufacturer's instructions. Um, but oftentimes the manufacturer's instructions are actually engineered through these charts, these, the, the National Fire Protection Agency. Anyhow, so there you go. That's how you figure out the size there. Um, one thing. Uh, I want to show you is the seven times rule real quick we'll cover this more probably a little bit more in uh, in a math class that we'll do on here but uh, I wrote it down I got all my I got all my chicken scratch here so what you want to make sure is that the inside of this chimney here, this masonry chimney is is not seven times larger than the uh, area of this flue pipe. So what we do is we use the formula for area of a circle because this is going to be round, correct? So pi r squared, which is 3.14 times the radius is going to be two inch because it's a four inch vent. So 3.14 times two times two, you get 12.56. I take that decimal turn it into a quarter. So I'm going to take 0.56 multiplied by 4, get the closest quarter inch. So I'd have two quarters, which gives me a half, right? So I'm going to have 12 and a half. 12 and a half inches. But well, we're going to multiply that by 7 to see what we get, which is 85 and a half square inches. Now let's say that the inside of this chimney is 12 by 12, which isn't too uh, which isn't too crazy as an example. You'd have 144 square inches. That's seven times the inside. 144 is bigger than 87.5, right? So it's too big. So this is what you'd have to do, which is very common now. You have to run a chimney liner down here. All right, a lot of guys will rip out a boiler right here. That boil is keeping this chimney chimney nice and warm in the winter when it's cold out. It doesn't have that anymore, so when this uh, uh, water heater fires off, 
that flue's not making it all the way up because it's not it's not hot enough. Um, and that's why they got real strict on the, the chimneys that on the outside of the house. But now they want you to do it to all of them. <clears throat> and it makes sense. And it's it's probably a good rule. Um, nobody likes spending money, but everybody likes to make it, you know? All right, next, we have a B-vent chimney. That's going right through the roof. That should be that. That's double wall right here. And this is single. Um, all right, my apologies here. I got a little tripped up here. Looking a little... A little squirrely here, but uh, so what it says here is three feet and two feet. All right, and then you have the chimney height all together is 40 feet. So if we go to the chart, we have let me widen this up for you a little bit. And again, if you have this at home, if you have NFPA uh, 54, there's a table 13, 2B. Again, the chimney we were just looking at, type B, double wall vent. Two or more, if you only had one, you'd be on the wrong, the wrong chart. Category one, appliance vent connector, single wall metal connector. All right, and that's what both of those appliances had. So what we're gonna do is, um, we get a size of the individual vents first. So we have a 110,000 BTU uh, furnace, right? Fan assisted. It's fan assisted. We know the vent height is 40 feet, right? But we got to round up to 50. Connect the rise is 3 feet. So here we are. And that appliance is fan assisted. So we have to find in between Fan min and fan max, 110,000 BTUs. So, scroll over, fan min, fan max, and here it is. 50 feet, 3 feet, 110,000 BTUs falls between 83 and 136. So we have 4 inch. 4 inch for that fan assisted. And just as a note, I didn't say it before, but your appliance input rating limits in thousands of BTU hours. That's why, just imagine a comment and three zeros, all right? <clears throat> comment, three zeros. Some of them are cubic feet now, and then you just multiply it by a thousand to get your BTUs. All I have to remember is a comment and three zeros on any of these charts, and then you'll uh, you'll be well on your way. All right, next we have that water heater. That is also a vent height of 40, rounded up to 50. But it has a connector rise of two feet. And that's natural draft. So that's gonna be in that doctor column under NAT, all right? And that was 40,000. 40,000 under NAT. There we go, three inch. So here we have this would be three inch. This would be four inch. Easy enough, not too bad. Now the only thing we need to do is find this column event. That column event size. All right, so where we find that is at the bottom. Common vent capacity, it's even labeled. Remember, your individual vents are up here, and then you come down here for your common vent capacities. All right, here we go for tricky again. Well, you gotta really pay attention. Fan plus fan, fan plus nat, nat plus nat. So if you have two natural draft appliances, you have to be in this column. If you have one fan, one natural, which we have, this is the column we're gonna be in. Or if they're both fan assistant, they'd be in this column here. All right, so we're in fan and nat. We had a 40,000 BTU natural draft. 110,000 fan assisted. So that gives us a fan plus nat of 150. And there you have it. So 
but first we gotta go to height, vent height. 30 to 50, we gotta go to 50. And we need to find a fan nat of 150,000 BTUs. So 50, we're looking for fan plus nat that gives you 150. We don't get anything till we get the five inch. So five inch it is. Let's look at that one more time. And this here would be five inch, five inch B vent. That's what your chimney would be. All right, the stuff isn't too bad. You just gotta uh, go through the charts. Even you, saw, you know, I got tripped up a little bit, uh, you know, kicking this class, but we'll do more. Like I said, I'll get some uh, examples out there. Um, you can, you know, maybe follow along if you have these charts from NFDA 54. Um, you can just, you, you can pause the page, see if you can figure it out, get the answer, and, and then move on. All right. Well, again, thanks again for joining us, and uh, make sure you tell a friend, subscribe, anybody who uh, has, like needs any help. You know, try to send us a message, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, help you out. All right. Thank you.